Welcome student. In this section, we'll be talking about how urban form is influenced by transport. So, firstly, the city or its form depends upon the transportation system, which will enhance the interaction level of the city and that will ultimately develop the land use patterns of the city. And all of these work collectively will influence your urban form. So, it, in previous, in the old cities, most of the cities were developed along rivers or all the civilizations of the world were once along the rivers. And all the cities were once walking cities or some people called it walled cities in old area, old days. So, how we have moved from walking cities to automobile cities? Firstly, the city size or city growth would depend upon the type of transportation system available in a city. So as the means of travel grew or the length of those travel, like for example, we move from horse cart to bicycles to cars, when we got a mode of transport, then the city grew from walkable city to automobile city, the city sizes grew. So urban form was predominantly influenced by the transport technologies available at particular time. So depending upon the transport technologies, the city grew. So urban transportation was defined at how many people could assess that transportation service. So whoever can assess the transportation, they can move wherever these services provided. So they can even move in the city or then they can move in the outskirts where the land is usually cheaper. And then urban transportation also limited people how far they can travel to work. So that kind of provided location choices to the people where they might settle down in case they have a job in the city. And then it also signifies or helps in acquiring food and exchange services and visiting friends. So that kind of influenced your city development or city growth in which you can now move from one part of the city to another part just because you have a car. So the city sizes grew dramatically as soon as this technology changed. So how do these cities grow? How do transportation influence the city so for this please watch this video so so now you know how different transportation systems or modes have influenced the shape of the city so similarly these systems have also influenced the densities. So if your local institution is developing a road system, the city sprawl, sprawl would be like Atlanta. But if your local institutions or city administration are focusing toward public transportation system, it will be more dense and would require less area. So in your opinion, which density is sustainable? which is not, it all depends how your local institutions are thinking about it. So we were also then talking about the accessibility of different modes. So as different modes of transportation grew or the technologies increased, the shape of the city expanded. So this is an ideal diagram which shows how a city would grow depending upon the provision of different type of urban transportation modes. So you can see we, we are talking about walkable neighborhoods, walkable walkability in the sustainability context in which a city must be around, you can say 20 kilometers, which is easily walkable at that time. But as we move from walking to streetcars, to cycling, to automobile, and some highways and freeways, then city size expanded dramatically. 
this graph shows how transportation and land use interact each other. So transportation provides, provides accessibility and accessibility will then incentivize people to settle down and start their businesses or set up their industries or residential areas and that will ultimately develop your activity patterns which are then influenced by different processes and then again that processes will ultimately influence to maybe extend your transportation system improve your transportation system or you can say uh, revolutionize some new technology what would rapidly change the transportation system so another thing another component of element of urban form is the street networks what kind of steep network type are you opting for development so whatever type of street network you are using that will ultimately shape the city so the most common is or the go-to pattern is the rectilinear grid pattern that is a pattern which provides maximum road connection and some road hierarchy and that is a very easy pattern or go-to pattern by most of the planners that shapes the city well it sometimes depend upon the planner or the architect sometimes they would like this or not every pattern every pattern has pros and cons so rectilinear grid is predominantly adopted especially in plain areas where the uh, the topography is not changing so much so we opt to rectilinear grid one of the oldest patterns also called hippodamian grid model back in the greek era this model was very common and used in the greek old greek cities a plan of williamsburg in 1699 it also used the same pattern of development another is the curvilinear grid pattern when the when the topography is not so you can say plain so we can opt curvilinear grid which kind of compensates for the topography as well so grid you might have seen that these kind of curvilinear grid pattern are very common in the suburbs so this is another kind of pattern another is your spider web or radial pattern which is radiated from a center of the city it is geometrically focused from the center so this is buenos aires argentina here you can observe some kind of spider web pattern in the previous section you might have seen paris as well it also had the spider web pattern washington dc 1791 so washington dc has this pattern spider web uh, radiating from the center from the white house you can say another is the stamp pattern that is also being commonly used in uh, very far flung areas which is sometimes used for high end or you can say rich people for housing so it is not it is not optimized for urban development but it is more towards the aesthetical beauty or conservation of the area so it is used it predominantly uses the cul de sacs at the end of the roads and have mostly used in the residential areas now lastly is how your boundary of the city or a scheme or a residential area shapes your road pattern so depending upon the shape boundary of your region of your development area jurisdiction area it will influence your pattern which sort of pattern a planner will opt to design that will then ultimately shape up the city